you wished upon a star. Now we want you to share with us our latest and greatest dream. Disneyland. Just go to Action Park, there's no other park like it. Six Flags Great Adventure. It's not a world away. Paramount's Kings Island. We will officially open Universal Studios Florida. Hello, I'm Michael Eisner. Now, here is your host. Welcome back to the Defunct Land Podcast. My name is Kevin Perger. Today, I am joined by the extremely talented YouTuber that came out of absolutely nowhere, uh, Jenny Nicholson. Jenny, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. Um, and when I, I mean, I guess we both came out of nowhere because we both started probably around the same time, right? I think so. Yeah, I think you popped up around when I was starting it. Yeah, but you've done way better. So teach me your secrets. Where did you come from? Into- <laughs> you get a lot of views. I mean, you have a lot of subscribers, though. That's true. That's well, yeah. How many, subscri- how many subscribers do you have? <laughs> I don't know. I think. Um, Two fifty thousand ballpark. <laughs> Ball, nice. I don't. I try not to check that often. <laughs> You don't want to see the number go down and then think about it too um, much. Has that ever happened? I don't know, because I don't check. Okay, well, there you go. I oh, devastating. Well, it's like when I did that um, Battlefront video, everyone was like, this is going to kill your channel. Your subs are going to go way down. And I was like, oh, no, is that true? And I don't know if that was true. If it was, then it recovered since then. But <laughs> you don't want to get that in your head. Yeah, when you're trying. Yeah, this Even I have issues trying to, you know, just making sure, oh, I don't want to you know turn anybody away and then how could you make people angry though like you pick the wrong theme park right you have the wrong take on astro world um you would be shocked and amazed (laughs) at the (laughs) way i actually just uh I'm getting comments on an old podcast now. Basically, I, I said Worlds of Fun is bad because it is. Um, it's a theme park in Kansas City, if you want to call it a theme park. Oh, and it's probably beloved to a lot of people. Wouldn't, yes. I mainly went after their parent company, Cedar Fair. and oh, that Cedar is, Fair is the worst. Okay, well, hold on. No, it's not. Cedar Fair <laughs> is the best. And no. You, you no. Don't, don't say that. <laughs> Cedar Fair is the devil. Wow. Okay. They're well, going to come for me now. Cedar Fair. <laughs> Fair ruins everything they touch. They have like the opposite of a Midas touch, where just everything turns to ash. And we're ruin. actually uh, sorry. I have to do a quick plug for today's sponsor, Cedar Fair Amusement Parks. <laughs> <laughs> Visit Knott's Berry Farm today. Do they still own Knott's? They do own Knott's, although Knott's oh, seems to operate. It shows. Oh, does it really? Okay, I haven't been. Well, the Legends of not Legends of Frontierland, the knockoff of Legends of Frontierland that they're doing, Ghost Town Alive. That's really cool. So points for that. Yeah, I've heard that's getting great reviews. Yeah, I I haven't visited this summer, but I went on the last day they were doing it last summer, and it was really cool, and like people were super into it. Well, fantastic! There you go. That's why Cedar Fair is the best. And no, it wasn't they're doing. They probably fought against it. <laughs> they're like, oh, it's too good. Take it away. That doesn't. That's not going to break any records. Does it have the tallest ghosts? Are they the fastest Building ghosts? Be a big roller coaster <laughs> right over Ghost Town. Put a support beam right in the cemetery. That's where that goes. I will I will give it this though. I was at Disney World a couple weeks ago and it rained really hard and you know it's so I mean the the park paths are so like clear. Mm-hmm. There was nowhere to run to. So I guess if you have support beams everywhere you can run to one and get under it. And hunker under like a dripping metal roller coaster track. Exactly. Well you're in LA. So you, you Disneyland is your home park. Yeah. And it always was. I grew up in the San Francisco area, so okay. not like local to it, but this is the one my family would always visit when I was a kid. And that, so in that case, you've had the luck of experiencing Anaheim Space Mountain. Yes. Instead of, Flor- you, more so than Florida. Yes. I didn't ride Florida's until a few years ago when I went out there for the first time. And I actually think Florida's is better. What? In what way? Uh, it's scarier. Yeah. You get more adrenaline <laughs> going. It's scarier. It's more like visceral because you're in that toboggan instead of the actual proper roller coaster car. Mm-hmm. So you just feel like you're going to fall out the entire time. It takes that horrible picture that's like just of your like li- like your legs, your thigh level. <laughs> just like, oh, cool. It's like an awkward photo of me sitting in a chair. That, that picture profile. always comes out really, really awkward. 
the um the one in Florida, you mean, right? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. one where it's like because they they take one at the end here, but in Florida they take it when you're going up the lift hill, like when nothing exciting is happening. Yeah. So you just have like three people with like vaguely bemused expressions looking away from the camera with like uncertain smiles. Yeah, I see those on Twitter all the time. They're always the, that and Buzz Light, your Space Ranger spin. Oh, that wherever that is is when I'm in my most intense moment oh, and I'm like man. ducking down. Yeah, the Disneyland oh, one always takes good pictures where you like look like you're in kill mode. I still don't quite know where they take it. Yeah, uh, I haven't ridden the Florida version of that ride. It is, it's really good. The um, the, just the pictures. I mean, the ride is uh, not good. <laughs> so the, the ride itself needs an update. Sorry, my 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 my, uh, my positivity towards experiences are very specific. Well, I also heard that it's worse than the Disneyland version. I heard that you can't move the gun like it's mounted to the ride vehicle, so you can't actually move it around and stuff. That just sounds kind of lame. Yeah, it's a it is a little bit lame, I guess, if you put it that way. I I haven't been to Di- I'm actually going to Disneyland this summer, but I haven't been in a since I've started Defunct Land. What? I know. It's well, I mean, that's only a year, but like we were talking about earlier, it's not that long. But oh, okay. I, I've been to <laughs> <Fine. I'm, laughs> Disney World's my home park. And so I, you know, you get that experience. So I'm I'm interested to see see the difference between you know, from a from my new the new sense of, oh, I kind of talk about this a lot versus oh I'm just going because I like to go. I think I've been two or three times in the past. So have you seen the new Rivers of America? No. No? Oh, that's exciting. Like you mean and, and you mean the nineteen fifty six version when they moved the Indian village? Yeah, like the, the redone for Star Wars land version that they've done. Um no. Is it is it good or bad? I love it. i I haven't heard anyone that dislikes it. So yeah, I'm of the opinion that it's good. Um they moved the Indian village again. <laughs> And they moved the gully wumper, but it's still there. Um, and it has more wildlife. They opened it up. They added falls. It's kind of just a good miniature throwback to the mine train ride. Well, that's that's good. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing that. I mean, the uh, I know because of Disneyland's layout, the Rivers of America are a lot more populated than the Rivers of America at Disney World. Because, you know, Big Thunder only gets so far because Splash Mountain is closer to Frontierlands because we don't have Critter Country, right? Oh yeah, yeah. So, and then Big Thunder is is further than that, um, but there's really not that much over there. I mean, when you're going around, you actually see trees, and in Disneyland, um, it's right next to the highway, right? Well, you have the berm, so there are like a lot of trees and fences on the side that your attention is directed away from. And then on the inside, it's all maintenance buildings, but also some trees and some scenery. Um, But yeah, they do have a pretty good insular feeling, even though you are right next to the highway. Um, They intentionally direct your attention away from it, so you're not thinking about it so much. Ah, well, I'm very much looking forward to getting to Disneyland to see just the the difference in the size, especially, Mm -hmm. because the scale of the Magic Kingdom, um, again, after seeing it through the eyes of... Um, someone that wants to research and talk about these theme parks. It is, um, I know, a lot more massive than Disneyland's, but Disneyland's is more cozy. So do you have a preference between the two? Uh, I mean, Disneyland is my home park, but I think having worked there, I think that Florida feels more like the place that you only go to vacation. And since it is so far away, whenever I go, it's for like five to seven days so you do get that feeling of like i'm in vacation mode and it feels so insular because it's like its own city so i almost prefer florida right now and they have epcot we just have california adventure so yeah maybe florida but that feels like a betrayal to say i yeah i mean it's a betrayal to the fact that disneyland was the first one Mm -hmm. but it's just i mean they they don't have the space and they never will yeah Uh, and it's and that's the unfortunate part i mean disney like I was saying, Disney World, I mean, they get out. We have real alligators, yeah. you know, coming in and like, it's real. I love Frontierland that. Frontierland is real. Yeah. So, <laughs> the, um, so before we get started on our main discussion today, which will be a lot over IPs and movies in the theme parks, can you just tell me um, uh, how you got here today? Like, I, you know, I have been watching your videos and you you just started creating and you already have 250,000. So where were you? I know you did something with My Little Pony. <laughs> yeah, that was way back in the day. My friend and I did a like fan dub of My Little Pony, kind of like Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridge series. I'm, I'm sure people are more familiar with that, um, where it was like a parody dub and we would rewrite the story of the episodes. 
and just dub it with all new dialogue, new songs, and totally change the story. Um, and that was on a different account. That was not on my current YouTube channel, but I made my own channel and I used it to upload like line requests that people had given because I voiced all the ponies in the dub. Um, so people would be like, can you say this as rarity or twilight sparkle or whatever? Um, so I would use it for line requests or for bloopers or demos of some of the songs that we did. And just through that, I only really posted those videos like on my Tumblr and my Twitter so I got like 2,000 subscribers from that. So just still really small. And then it kind of, I just let that sit forgotten for a couple years. <laughs> and then when I decided to make YouTube videos again, I did one where I was like making fun of Star Wars naming conventions. And it was really just to show to my friends because I thought it was funny. And among my 2,000 or whatever subscribers that I still had, one of them shared it on Reddit and it got some good mileage on Reddit, and I think got like 100,000 views. And then from that, my sub count jumped up to like 10,000. And then I did another one that was like a skit between Ray and Luke Skywalker, and that one got shared again, and that one hit the front page of our videos. So that one got like a million views. Um, so that bumped my subscribers up to like 50,000. And then from there, every time I uploaded a video, it would be just kind of a steady, gradual climb in subscribers. It's that easy. It's that, it just get shared on Reddit, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, it's like it was just kind of lightning in a bottle, I guess. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I, I do have a question about the fascination of My Little Ponies. <laughs> um, I Sorry if this is uh, me being ignorant. Please do not come after me, bronies. I feel like in the beginning... I had some conflicts with the Brony community in the beginning of Defunct Land. I forget what it was. How? What's the crossover? I would love to know. Um, <laughs> I, I don't. Um, I, 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 I honestly couldn't tell you. I just remember seeing a lot of profile pictures of My Little Pony characters getting very mad at things I was saying. Um, this was in the beginning when I was a lot. I had a lot of captions and I had a lot of more hot takes on my on my videos. Now I have the podcast where I can just spiel whatever I want. Um, but now I can try to keep my opinion and commentary out of my of my videos. But back then I had a lot of um, you know My Little Pony fans or just people that loved using My Little Pony profile pictures. If that's a sector of that fan base, <laughs> um, yeah. To uh, just to t tell me that I was wrong. So why? Well, I have a theory, and it's it's not a very helpful theory, but okay. my theory is just that of the people who like to leave angry YouTube comments, like the Venn diagram of that and bronies has like a huge overlap. So it's just like if you're anyone that gets any comments at all, you're going to see some pony avatars in there because there are so many bronies on the yeah. internet. And I mean, I'm not knocking it. We all like our weird things. Extinct theme park rides or My Little Pony. Oh, I know. And those are my two, like, passions. Sorry, Star Wars. I have my pony shelf and I have, well, I have a Star Wars shelf, but I have my extinct theme park attractions shelves. <laughs> my friend Dan of Disney Dan has a Kermit the Frog room. Oh my so I God. think he's got both of us beat as far as things. I love Kermit and just as much as the next guy. But well, yeah, Kermit's great, but <laughs> Kermit room. It's a Kermit office. I, it's not just like it's not a room in which he. Oh, okay. It's not just. I Kermit. mean, it, it's he's his office and he just has pictures of Kermit. It's not like a room that he's dedicated to, like a DOD. It's not the Kermit collection room because I know someone that has a pony room. Actually, she has oh. a lot of ponies. She's thousands. Wow. Okay. I'm not on that level. I I probably would if I could, to be honest. So I. Can't can't hate. But why My Little Pony? Why is it that one show? <laughs> well, for me, it wasn't about the show. It was initially about the toys that I liked playing with as a kid. So I liked ponies before the current incarnation that bronies are into. Okay. Um, I, like, as a kid, played with the pony toys. And then when I got to, like, the age where I was looking at GeoCities sites on the internet, I found out about the ones that had existed in the 80s. And I, I mean, it's the same as extinct theme park rides. I thought it was really cool that there were ponies from like before I was born that I could find and clean up and keep. And yes, that's exactly the same as what I did. Yeah, they're very, they feel elusive. It's the same <laughs> exactly, idea as yeah. the theme park rides where you're like, what? There's, there's a ride I never got to ride and like you can only find old mementos and remnants and photos of it. It's the same appeal. They're very close. They don't feel that they would be, but they are. Yeah, I guess that is true. 
See, this is uh, this is bridging gaps in my brain for me, <laughs> yeah. so thank you. Now the bronies will be happy in the comments. I don't think so. No. Like, they're going to be like, how did you not understand? I still don't understand. I'd like to point out, other than the idea that there were th- that it has a long history, but, I mean, why are there no Care Bros? Are there Care Bros, like for the Care Bears? Care Bears don't have big anime eyes. There you go. I think we can move on. I think you just <laughs> solved it. <laughs> yeah. On that note, so you... you <laughs> so... As far as theme parks go, so we know how the you know the movie side of things um, with screen junkies and whatnot, and you know your YouTube channel, which is well heavy on movies. Mm-hmm. What about um, theme parks? Where did your love start with that? Oh, early. I would say like earlier than Star Wars, earlier than My Little Pony. Like that was the first thing I was really nerdy about, and I think the way it got started is I found Yesterland. That like wonderful website where they have the compilation posts of all the different extinct attractions. Yeah. Um, I think actually it probably started with um, Doom Buggies, the one where they tell you all the illusions of the Haunted Mansion. Um, and I think that was my first foray into like, well, I'm home from the theme park, but let me find out more. And I was so interested in the behind the scenes aspect. And then from there, I found out about rides that didn't exist anymore. And that was really cool to me. And then it it all just spiraled, (laughs) just consuming a lot of fan pages, a lot of fan content. There's one called, like, is it Fresh Popped Corn or something like that? Where they have, like, write-ups about the Imagineering process and about um, the original Frontierland plans for Florida. I'm not sure of that one. I do know Yesterland and Doom Buggies, though. So you're on the right track. Those are great. Yeah. Um, I'll try to find find links to my favorite. Yeah, Dave Land is great. Um, I like a lot of the ones that are just straight up on Blogspot, where it's like long, difficult to navigate blog posts that you can just read one at a time. That is true. Uh, the entire Disney and theme park fan community needs a lot of help with their HTML because Di- oh yeah, Disneyandmore.blogspot.com is a fantastic website, but it's Blogspot. Matterhorn1959.blogspot.com also great <laughs> um and gorillas don't blog dot blogspot dot com is also really great. that one's great i love gorillas don't blog yeah so it's uh all these dot blogspot dot coms are sneakily um the best sites it's just that their html yeah. is leaves a lot to be desired well and there's also ones that are like aren't on blogging site clients but they just look really old internet like um the fan site that has all of the behind the scenes of uh, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. And I think it's like 20kride.com. Yeah. And just the design of that website looks so like mid to late 90s. And I don't even think it's that old. But you just look at like the layout of the sites and you're like, oh, this is like I'm an archaeologist <laughs> finding something truly ancient on the internet. Also, dafe.org, D A F E. I think they're the dark. Oh, they're gonna make me do, the dark attractions fun enthusiasts. I know I. Oh, I don't know that. I know I messed oh. that up really bad. But the um, is that the one about like all the defunct um, fun houses and things like yes, that? Yes, they're very. I was just trying to. Uh, oh my gosh, my Patreon topic last month was dark rides, and I was specifically trying to remember what website that was because I used to read it all the time. Um, so I'm glad you jogged that memory. There you go. It is dafe.org. It's Dark Ride and Funhouse Enthusiasts. Okay. And do they or do they not have an elaborate story about a funhouse from like the 1920s that was operated by the mob and burned down on the night of a charity gala? Or did I make all of that up? I'm sure they do. <laughs> that sounds like something I'm they would have. I'm about to read the whole site and find out. I swear to God, there was a story along those lines. And I was like, what was that exact story? How strange. And I couldn't find any remnant of it. They burned down their whole plywood mountain, the mafia. I'm uh I'm researching, you know, I have my topics for Defunct Land season two all out for the rest of the year. But when I if if we get season three, you know, I gotta wait for the green light from myself. Um, <laughs> but the, so if we if we get renewed, I don't know. Um, if the studio wants it, if, if the studio, if it's 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 up to you, fans. Yeah, <laughs> gotta get those ratings in. Um. What we're I'm looking into all I'm, because season two has a very nostalgic and sad a tone, and I want season it sure does. <laughs> you make me so depressed. Yeah, Astro World was twenty four. Oh, that one got me because I hadn't even heard of Astro World before, and you're watching it the whole time, like, 
oh no, are they really going to get rid of the whole theme park? <laughs> no, there's no way. It couldn't. It couldn't happen. It's devastating. The one, the Earth to the Moon one got me because I like forgot I was watching Defunct Land. So I'm watching it like, oh, I didn't know Disneyland Paris had such a different Space Mountain. Oh, I can't wait to ride this. Maybe I will go to Paris. Maybe I'll go to Paris and ride this Space Mountain and I'm getting to the end like, wait, <laughs> wait a second. Yeah, no, I, I got a few comments like that. And then it's like, what do you think it's going to be? Hyperspace Mountain, of course. Or, yeah. or Mission 2. Which I don't hate Hyperspace Mountain, but it's kind of like the worst incarnation of Space Mountain. It's... It's whatever anymore. I, I'm just surprised they haven't torn down Space Mountain and built a new Star Wars themed roller coaster yet. They won't. That's for Star Wars land. Star Wars land means that Space Mountain is safe. Do you think they care? They're, they're leaving no. Star Tours open. The entire Carousel Progress. For now, they're leaving Star Tours open. The Carousel Theater at Disneyland, isn't that still Star Wars Launch Bay? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I think, honestly, when they're done sinking all their money into Star Wars Land, I think they're probably going to demolish that theater and put in, like, a new proper attraction. Hopefully taking over the footprint of Autopia, which has no business still being in Disneyland. Well, that's a classic ride. I know. People get mad when I say I don't want Autopia to be there. They're like, my nephew loves Autopia. And I'm like, he'll love whatever they replace it with more. It's a large footprint. Yeah. But it does get, it's for the kids. And I think that maybe, we, I, just, I would have to look at ride capacity before I could say take it out or leave it. Because if, if it's getting a lot of kids out of... That's true. It might have a high turnover, but it loads so slowly. But I guess they load them in large batches. It's almost like a spinner ride where you don't notice how many people it's sucking up. Disneyland is so lazy. Disney in general is so lazy with their carnival rides. They're like, if it doesn't, if it's not something that people can get in and it lifts them up and spins them in circles and puts them back down, we're not doing it. <laughs> because I, there's there's three yeah. of them at Disney World. People love them. Do they? No. <laughs> people love Dumbo. And, and so Dumbo's fine. People love Dumbo, but... I don't see the point. Well, I guess Florida's version of the Astro Jets. Is it called the Astro Orbiter there, too? It's the Astro Orbiter, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's what ours is. Um, or no, ours is not the Astro Orbiter, is it? It's the Astro Jets. I don't know. I never ride it. I hate that ride. Um, but yours is elevated. Yeah, I know. I was yeah, just about to say. Yeah, ours is on the ground. I think the fact that yours is elevated could lend it like a really cool aspect. I haven't ridden that one either, but... I have not either, and I've been there a bunch. It's just because you have to take the elevator up, and I'm like, not today. Yeah, and the line is always so yeah, long. I'm like, not today. I'm sure it's fun, but no. Yeah, if it was like a five-minute wait, I would absolutely do it. Did you see the concept art for the three-tiered carousel they wanted to put in an Animal Kingdom? No. I just saw like an Imagineer sketch of that, and it looked so dangerous and impossible, um, but I loved it. It was supposed to be like the Animals of the World carousel, and it existed only in sketches, obviously. And they had the normal carousel level that was like land animals, like safari creatures. And then they had a lower tier that was like skimming the water, like they were boats attached to the carousel and they were fish. And then they had a third branch, like up in the sky where kids were like riding on the backs of butterflies and eagles. And I was like, this looks so dangerous and such a nightmare to load. And how would this work? But like, I wish they had tried it. That that does sound dangerous. I There are... I mean, I also listen a lot to Jim Hill Media's podcasts. Um, he has some great theme park podcasts if you haven't listened to him. Yeah, I've heard a couple of his. Much more dense with information than mine. Um, mine are very, oh, unless it's a interview. Mine are mainly just uh, riffing as we're doing now. Yeah. But as far as he had this a similar concept for, you know, something like that is dangerous mm -hmm. and that would never work. It was a planes ride based off of that not Pixar <laughs> yeah, Pixar Disney movie Toon planes. Yeah, Disney Toon Studios planes. Yeah, and it was it was supposed to swing. You, it was supposed to like it was a you know a stunt show ride where no a stunt show roller coaster what? where you could like manipulate the ride to swing around the track so you could go in circles oh around my the God. track. As Jim put it, one of the Imagineers said something like, "You know we can't build this, right?" Yeah. Also, any kid riding it would just be either upside down the whole time or just spinning constantly the whole time. They would never give it a rest. They wouldn't be like, I'm going to execute a barrel roll like a plane. <laughs> they would just be constantly tilting in circles around the yeah, track. Yeah, and um, 
They, yeah, no. It's just the same lever system that they give you on you yeah, know, Dumbo and on all those. Dumbo. Just Can you imagine the poor mom that, like, well, you can't ride it without your parent, and your mom's like, I don't want to be here for this. <laughs> <laughs> don't spin it. I'm ready for the high-speed dark ride, like shooting dark ride, like Buzz Lightyear, but it's 60 miles an hour. Oh, that would be sick. Can you imagine the motion sickness from that, though, of trying to, like, focus on targets while you're swinging around? They should do an Iron Man ride like that. I know, I, but they're going to do simulators. And you're harnessed into, like, a jetpack thingy, and you you have both hands are each holding a gun like you're a cowboy. <laughs> Hold on, because that's going to be our, our fun game that we're going to play. Oh, okay, okay. Because okay. we got to do stupid games later. Okay, I've got ideas. Oh, good. So... Theme parks. I feel like that was the last question I asked. Um, were so you've always you always got into theme parks. And when was? Well, I guess I should ask you this. Why don't you talk about theme parks more on your YouTube channel? You did this great video <laughs> about the top ten lamest things to do at Walt Disney World, and I immediately was outraged and clicked on it because I saw what you were talking about. Like you're like Carousel Progress, People Mover, all these yeah. things, and I was like. What do you mean by lame? And then I kind of caught on what you meant because you started like praising the things. Yeah. And I was like, okay, fine. My favorite lame things, because all of my favorite things at Disney World objectively are some of the lamest ones that I have to drag my friends to do with me because no one wants to waste time riding the Carousel of Progress when you only have a few days at Disney World. The Carousel of Progress is the raisin brand of Disney attractions. Yeah. It, because it is, it is objectively healthier and probably better f- than the other ones. But uh, but it's never chosen much by children. No, like if they had like the buffet style lineup of different cereals, no one would go for Carousel of Progress. Well, here's a fun game, impromptu. What are the cereals of Walt Disney World then? Oh, oh. Or or let's okay. Do you want to do? I remember or, hearing that you cannot get Cheerios. I believe. Ho- at hold Disney on, World? I meant like as far as doing similes. Oh, you were talking legitimate cereals. Yeah. that's I not a fun you were game. Legitimately, like what cereals do they carry? Because that is a real piece of trivia. Because there is like you there got certain... so excited for a game I didn't want to play. No, I was so excited to hear the answers from you because I was like, this means he knows exactly what cereals they carry. I don't at the resort. I don't know. So I believe that's true, though, that they don't carry Cheerios. I think that's one of the things they always tell moms is like, if your toddler only wants Cheerios, you better bring your own because you're out of luck. Everyone gets a Cheerio except for Disney yeah. World. OK, but no, let's let's match them up, too. I would say that Buzz Lightyear's uh, Space Ranger Spin, I think, is what yours is called. Right. Um, I would say that's like the Lucky Charms, right? What? Really? Yeah. You think that's the Lucky Charms? <laughs> Isn't Lucky Charms high commodity cereal? I guess. It just... No, actually, no. Midway Mania is the Lucky Charms. Okay. Because it's just screens, and it just satisfies the most base, like, kids that just play on an iPad all day. And they're like, I want to play a video game. I'm at Disneyland, but I want to play a video game. And then they go to Midway Mania, and it always has, like, an hour-long line, even though there's, like, nothing interesting inside of it. It's just screens that you're shooting at. That's the Lucky Charms. No nutritional value, but insanely mm. popular. Okay. What's the Cheerios? Oh. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. Nost- well, Cheerios are, like, nostalgic, and little kids love them. So I want to say Dumbo is the Cheerios. Okay, I was thinking that. Like or... no frills, tried and true. Mm-hmm. Okay, what's uh, what about the Cookie Crisps? Well, Cookie Crisps are like fool's gold, right? Where you're like, right? Oh, they're gonna taste just like cookies, and then they don't. Because Cookie, well, I guess that's true. I was thinking Cookie Crisps have been around for a while now. Oh, okay. But they, but 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 ju- I remember the, the a big marketing push for them. Okay, let's do yours. Cookie Crisps are the fake outs of cereals. <laughs> they're the fake outs. <laughs> so I'm gonna make it um, Chippendales Treehouse, which is really fun to people watch outside of um, in our version of Toontown because it's all the way at the back of Toontown. And you see kids, like, running really excited because they, like, run up the stairs. They're going up into a treehouse. And it used to be that when you reached the top, there was a slide. And then the slide would go down into a ball pit that's now netted off next door. Um, They didn't want to supervise the ball pit. Kids were getting stepped on. So they emptied the ball pit. They fenced off the upper level where the slide was. So it is now just a staircase up and a staircase back down. And you can just see kids get disillusioned in real time. 
if they're going on the treehouse because you see them like run up the steps like oh my god what's gonna be up here and a new thing to discover and they just walk up there there's nothing and then they walk back down with this look of like anger and confusion and like betrayal i feel like there's a lot of those rides what what, um, what else i mean well you 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 have the luck of ha- still having toontown but at well disney world when we had donald's boat it was the same idea it was just a boat <laughs> like you, you just what are you what are you gonna do i mean i guess that's our donald's boat too but our donald's boat has like you can talk to it's like one of those playground talky things where you talk into a pipe and someone on the second floor can listen in the pipe maybe that's not exciting for kids anymore now that they all have phones i mean there's a lot of fake out attractions i feel um at universal studios oh yeah Um, like fast and furious supercharged (laughs) <laughs> oh, that one's brand new. I haven't experienced that. I rode the Jimmy Fallon ride. I loved walking in. I was like, this is brand new. What do you mean it's only a five minute wait? This is amazing. And no, it makes sense. Well, it's a five minute wait because of the queue system that's different. Maybe that's why. Did you I just walk just in really when you weren't unpopular. supposed to? really unpopular. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think you're supposed to reserve your time for it because there's no line. Oh, no. They like they brought us in like they were just outside like, come on in. And then they gave us like the color green. And then we walked in and they were like, green, now boarding. And we were like, oh, OK. OK, gotcha. Huh. That's interesting. No, I uh, I know that that, that ride actually the only that its redeeming quality is its revolutionary queue system. But have you been to your Universal Studios and been on the part of the tram tour where it has Fast and Furious? Yes. Where you're going through the tunnel and, yeah. Yeah. Then you've now rode Fast and Furious Supercharge. Oh, God. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's not even like Kong where they plus it up with, like, scenery and stuff like that? Um, I don't I don't know. I have not gotten the chance to be there yet. Because um, Kong Skull Island is the same as our Kong portion of our tram. Yeah. But they also add, like, little interstitial scenes with animatronics and the... The bus is driven by like an animatronic driver, which is really it's creepy. Cool. It's it's cool. It's creepy, but it's cool. It's creepy when the ride doesn't work, which it never does. I'd like to point out. Really? Um, Kong broke down when I was on it, and so when you when when oh. your when your bus that is dro- driven by a robot with human flesh stops working in the <laughs> middle of a fake jungle, it, you just get a weird feeling. That you know? is really creepy. I didn't think about that. I wrote it. Um, Twice in a row because I I waited for it once. And then as I was leaving, one of my former Disney cast member friends who now works there um, happened to be the lead that day. And he was like, oh, you've got to write it again. So he brought us right back on and put us with his favorite animatronic driver. And he was telling me all these Easter eggs and stuff. Um, So, yeah, I like the ride in general. I do wish that it wasn't screens, though. Like, everything that they make. uh, It's unfortunate how many screens there are. But the... uh... I'm going to be called a Disney fanboy if I start talking about that too much, which is crazy because I talk crap on Disney all the time. Well, and Universal knows. They know that they have too many screens. Like, you can feel their shame a little bit. They have to. They have to understand by now. I actually got that question on a survey. I did, like, an exit survey one time I visited, and one of the questions was, like, in your opinion, what percentage of our rides are motion simulators? And I put 100% out of spite. (laughs) I'm... I was like, yeah, according to me, that's all you have. Make a better impression, Universal. <laughs> I mean, at the, at the same time, screen technology is is getting a little bit more interesting with the Star Wars hotel that's coming to Disneyland and Disney World. Or Disney World. I don't know that much about that. I feel like they've kept it so under wraps. And the new Mission Space restaurant. I'm so excited for that. Yes. They have the screens on the windows, so it looks like you're in space on both. Yeah. So, I mean... Who who knows? I think that'll be really cool. There's a lot of... I mean, just because it's a screen doesn't mean it's bad. It's just if it's only a screen, it's... Exactly. <laughs> like, I think if it's to enhance an already built atmosphere, like a window in a room that they actually just, built. Yeah, exactly. Or, like, Forbidden Journey. Forbidden Journey, they enhance these actual set pieces and animatronics. So that one, it doesn't bother me. Even though when you see the screen, you're not like, oh my god, it's Hermione, she's here. I don't think it works as an illusion, but I think it's a really good ride, like in spite of the screens, because I think they're integrated well. I love Universal because they they perfected the entire idea of this with Spider-Man in Islands of Adventure. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, now nah, let's not do that again. Let's make it, let's make everything yeah. 
like a worse version of this. Like they, they had this revolutionary ride. They basically, I mean, just amazing. Well, I've only ridden Spider-Man once, but Transformers is an identical ride system, right? It's an identical ride system. So they at least knew that they got it right enough to want to do it again. Yeah, but the theme is worse. Oh, yeah, that's true. I mean, I, I haven't even seen Transformers, so I just ride it like, yay, I'm moving. Oh, it's my. about the experience. Yeah. Sure, the AllSpark, yeah. Of course. You gotta get that all spark. Gotta get the all spark. I don't. Yeah, Universal. Well, I guess we're talking about Universal now. Um, <laughs> there's a very highly anticipated game we're gonna play because I'm sure I'm gonna put it like in the description and people are gonna be like, are they gonna do that? Um, we're, we're actually not doing. We're the not game. doing that. And I feel like the original question was, why do you like theme parks? So I feel like this counts. Um, okay. And, uh, <laughs> I'm just on that wall. It counts. I, I have sure. four questions today. Okay. And <laughs> we're gonna talk for an hour. We might get through two of them. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, but Universal is such an interesting park. I mean, there's just, it's, it's amazing that they can do things so well as far as like Harry Potter. Like they just proved to people like, look what yeah. we can do. That was them like calling out Disney. Yeah. And it totally worked. It worked. It made Disney look sad. It did. <laughs> because that was in a period of time when Disney was in kind of a dry spell. And I mean, then, I mean, I still would argue that they're in that dry spell, but the, um, but yeah, so Universal basically just did that to prove that they could, and then they're like, so now that we've proven that we can do this, we're not going to do it anymore. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're never, never going to try again. <laughs> we did it. Let's all this, go home, team. <laughs> we just want you to know that when we make Kong the exact same as the Tram Tour, and when we make Fast and Furious the exact same as the Tram Tour, just between you and I, we know that we can do better. Yeah. We just both know we're doing it for money. Yeah, we want you to know that we did this to save money. That's like what's <laughs> inscribed over the archway when you're entering Fast and Furious. Like, we already <laughs> made it. We just wanted money twice. You're on and the ride, aren't so you? Wrong? That should be... <laughs> yeah. You're here. You're part of this. This is your fault too. <laughs> That's how I felt. I just saw Ocean's Eight. If you want, if you want, have you seen Ocean's Eight yet? Mm-mm. Um, it is the best female-only cast remake since the Ghostbusters. Okay, so is it good? I'm I'm not telling. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that is you. I mean, the the plot makes no sense. But besides that, the um that that's. I heard it was fun. It was a uh, sure. No, uh, <laughs> not. The, well, that, that's not the point. The, uh, the, the the point is afterwards, I was talking to someone and they were like, you know, I just don't get why they keep doing all these remakes and sequels. I'm like, we just saw the movie. That's why. Yeah. Like We, we just contributed to this problem. I'm no doubt part of the problem because every time I complain about the parks, I buy a ticket. I'm, I'm not pretending that I am solving these issues. I'm just, I just, I'm just a complainer. I like to complain. Well, yeah, I like to just go and then shame them. <laughs> so what would be your favorite ride at Universal? Oh, um, Florida or California? Is that a question? <laughs> Do you have a favorite ride at California that isn't at Florida? I have a favorite ride in Florida that's not at California anymore, which is E.T., we no longer have E.T., and that's my favorite in Florida. The Raisin Bran of Universal no. Attractions. <laughs> no! I, no, I enjoy it. I like it. It's great. It's a great ride. I'm just saying that that is not the typical answer. <laughs> I also think the Men in Black ride is really good. Uh, yeah, it is. A, that is a defunct ride walking. Mm -hmm. It is interesting. E.T. for me is literally a defunct ride walking because we used to have E.T. in California, like when I was a kid. Um, and they took it out to put in our tiny, sad version of the yeah, mummy ride. that's... Oh, my gosh. I'm trying to think. I've ridden that version of the mummy. It's so bad. I actually assumed it was the same, so I have never ridden the superior Florida version. Are you joking? Because I just thought... No, I just thought it was identical, and I was like, I've ridden that. I don't need to ride it here. Your, yours is I just... Yours is just a, like a, a couple hills and then reverse, yeah, you right? you go like straight, and then you go backwards, and then they're like, okay... Bye. It's very short. It's like a 30 second roller coaster. Yeah. And it takes, and that line is always so long. Sometimes it's not. I, I like to go to Universal on like weekdays when nobody's there. Oh, I'm sure no one's at Universal Studios Hollywood on a weekday. No, on weekdays they close at like 6 p.m. It's pathetic. It's, it's so the no saddest thing I've ever heard. It's not worth paying for parking, so nobody goes. That's so sad. Um, but, I mean, it, it's not their fault, necessarily. It's not their fault that their park's not good enough for people to want to go on weekdays. Well, I mean, what are, what are they going to do? Build more escalators? and Yeah. I guess. I mean, it's just there's no there's no space there. 
so weird how California is really dense and the property value is really high. I guess they, they, how would anyone have foreseen this back in the... Oh, I know. How would they have known when they decided to build a theme park in the middle of Hollywood? <laughs> There's no way this is going to keep growing. All right, let's do it. No. Should we, do we need to buy the surrounding area? Nah. This is adequate. <laughs> I think they bought it when it was already expensive. Maybe, yeah. And that's why they use the escalator. They're just like, we're going to use the tiny sliver of surplus land on our studio. I'm thinking they need to theme the escalator. This is about. This is going to get into the game we're going to play. This is horrible. Well, we, we should start playing the game. How about that? Okay. This okay, isn't even a game, game because there's no way to win and there's no points or there's no system. I can't wait. So this game's off to a great start. So this is put IPs into the parks. So and the stipulations are they cannot be big budget properties. And we'll go back and forth. Ooh. I, didn't, I almost said mine. So here, here, here's a freebie. This doesn't count as mine, but George of the Jungle Cruise with Brendan Fraser. Oh, no. Yeah. So that's an example. So is it to retheme existing attractions? You can do either. to build new ones? Okay. You can build a new one. Ooh. You can retheme an attraction. You can do tie-ins. Yeah. It's, okay. You just have to mess up the park in some way, and you can't use big budget properties. And that goes for Universal, too. We'll go both Disney and Universal. Okay. So the goal is to, you know, insert things like George of the Jungle Cruise, and whether it be a new ride or an overlay... But it cannot be something bigger. And, you know, we can stop one another if it's too big. So. Okay, good. I, I already know my first one. Okay, well, then do you want to go first? I was going to go first, but if, if you want to go first. No, I'll go first. I'll oh, do this. Okay, go for it. Your, your portmanteau inspired me. Um, so I'm also going to do a portmanteau. I'm going to have Halloween Toontown. Which is Halloween Town, the Disney Channel original movie series. Oh, no. I was. Tied in with Toontown. I was like, that doesn't. Ugh. Halloween. How amazing. Okay, you use the existing Jolly Trolley track to have a little animatronic cab with Benny, the skeleton cab driver. Was his name also Benny? We'll pretend that it was. And he's going up and down the track, and he, like, it's a performer with a puppet. So even though you can't get in the cab, the driver's window rolls down, and he's like, Hi there, I'm the skeleton cab driver. And, like, kids would be delighted. He just rolls back and forth. It's It's part of the living animatronic initiative actually he's not a puppet he's an animatronic i've just oh, decided okay. that now and okay i'm thinking of it as i go so i'm just gonna take a <laughs> well of course pause. this is like on the spot imagineering how can we fix chippendale's treehouse chippendale's treehouse can become a spooky tree perfect like a living spooky tree like the ones in wizard of oz where they're like stop taking my apples they have a face that's what's great about halloween town is like their mythos is just halloween <laughs> you can so you do can just anything make everything spooky well, and here's my reasoning. I am not a great fan of the Nightmare Before Christmas overlay on the Haunted Mansion. Um, I don't like that they do it across Halloween because it's so Christmas. And I love Christmas, but I don't even want to think about Christmas if it's not December or November. November is fine. But I don't want to think about Christmas and Halloween. I don't want to think about Christmas in January because that's depressing. That's just you've left the decorations up too long. And it's a, you know, a good quarter of the year that you can't ride normal Haunted Mansion. But they need to do it because goth kids love Jack Skellington. And they sell so much Jack Skellington merchandise. So what I think is that you can just let Toontown take the hit. You can have Halloween Toontown. You can convert the character shop in there to sell all the Jack mm. Skellington stuff. And then... You know, every night you're not doing fireworks. Leave it open. For the for spooks. spooks. All the spooks. Thrills and chills. You can have a Marnie and um, Debbie Reynolds meet and greet with uh, lookalike performers. Okay. I would love that. A photo op with their young sister, Sophie. That was Debbie Reynolds, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Debbie Reynolds. When did that movie come out? I want to say 1998-ish. Why do I know what this is? I feel like I've... I'm trying to, you know, trying to wrap my head around this. Did they make more than one? Yes. I think there have been four now. Oh, my. Okay. And I've I have only have, like, the ones that came out when I was really a kid were, like, one and two. And I guess three, but I, I wasn't that into it. I think they changed the actress for the third one. But um, the great thing is if you have a successful year of that, then you bring it back for Halloween Toontown 2, Calabar's Revenge. <laughs> Which is the sequel to Halloween Town. Well, of course, I was I was assuming. <laughs> so the whole place is taken over by Calabar. They have that city hall that all the characters come out of, but instead, Calabar, the evil skull-faced phantom, comes out and starts stealing everybody's magic. Is this why people are into My Little Pony? 
You know what? It goes deep lore. It goes deep, deep Halloween lore. Town it's lore. the deep lore. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, is do you have any other ideas for Halloween Town before we go on to mine? Nope. <laughs> okay. Halloween Toon Town. Halloween Toon Town. <laughs> with with like with like Toon. Halloween Toon Town Two. Calabar's Revenge. Is it? <laughs> Is it Halloween Toontown with Toon in parentheses? How is it stylized? Yes, it's in the middle there. It's in brackets, actually. Or on the Toontown logo, do you cross out with big red like markers Toon and put Halloween on top of it? No, it would be in brackets in the middle. They would okay, put so you're going with like cool a really boring, yeah, with like Times New Roman font. Yeah, Halloween Toon Town. Two. Sponsored by Raisin Brand. Calabar's Revenge. Sponsored by Raisin Brand. <laughs> Raisin Brand Treat Trail is right in there. <laughs> okay, so I, I'm going to revise this game a bit. Um, we'll do one round and see how it goes, and we might do another if we have time. But <laughs> okay. you can't do the same park twice in the same round. Oh, ooh, I hadn't even thought about the other parks. Ooh. You took Disneyland. So now you got to fit okay. it in. So mine is going to be Universal Studios Hollywood. Okay. It is the Paul Blart escalator. Oh my god. Next to the escalator, there's going to be another escalator that's closed off to the public, but you know, like it'll have a Kevin James, just a wax figure, not even animatronic, mm-hmm. just like a big wax figure. Which will do great in the heat, but just a just a big wax figure holding yeah. onto a Segway. It just in the dead heat of the summer sun. In, in the dead heat, and it's not even on really well. So as it's going down, it looks like he's going on a Segway down the escalator. And then there's two of them. So right when one like slams into the pavement and goes under, the next one pops up at the top. And so you could go down the escalator oh. and watch Paul Blart Mall Cop go down the same. And I'm not sure who created Paul Blart Mall Cop, but because it's universal, I'm going to guess we can get the rights to it because I'm not sure that's a high property as far as, far as theme parks go. Yeah, I feel like they could easily purchase that if they don't already own For it. For sure. But they, there might be a bidding war over Paul Blart. I wouldn't, nothing more in my life. I think it would be done. It's people be like, what happened? They'll be like, it's okay. There was a bidding war over... It was a bidding war for theme parks over Paul Bart Mall Cop, and I knew that whatever I did afterwards was of no purpose. My life's been fulfilled. Because it's yeah. done. Okay, so that's mine, Universal Studios Hollywood, the Paul Bart Escalator Experience. Oh my goodness, I was so absorbed in your answer that I haven't been okay, thinking I'm gonna, of mine. I'm going to think. Let me okay, see. So we, so we have left is Epcot. We have Epcot, we have Hollywood Studios. By the way, this, is, this exact practice we're doing right now is how they decided to put a Guardians of the Galaxy ride in Epcot. <laughs> It is, yeah. They're like fine. No, so I'm. I want to clarify your rules. It can't be a big budget thing. So we're ruling out like most recent theatrical releases. Right. I mean, it could do literally. If it could be an old big budget thing that now would be. Oh, it can. Oh, okay. But but it just can't be something that is getting rebooted or is like a. It can't be a high property right now. If it's easily purchasable or or the rights to it. Okay. I guess actually, I think this is something that I've I've literally said I wanted before, but. I want a, I want the Wilderness Creek Challenge Trail in California Adventure. So I haven't technically used it yet. It's a different park. Okay. Same resort, That's but fine. different That's park. Fine. Wilderness Creek Challenge Trail. I want to convert into a tree themed coaster through like a forest. You're on like a hanging track through a forest at like a mid speed roller coaster, like a kid friendly speed, and it's Brother Bear. And you're just seeing all the scenes from Brother Bear, everyone's favorite Disney Brother animated Bear. feature. You can see all your favorites. You can see Rut and Tuck, the Mooses. You can see Coda and Kenai, the Bear Brothers, and Kenai's human brother, Danahi. Yeah, I know the names of the Brother Bear characters. <laughs> Beat that. <laughs> wow, that's so... So is it? Are they animatronics? Are they figures? Oh yes, they oh, are. They they're are. animatronics. Okay. Oh, they they're actually absurdly good animatronics. They make every other animatronic in the U.S. parks look like a garbage wow. pile. That's intense. It's like it's the most budget and effort they've expended on any attraction in the last twenty years, and it's a brother bear themed ceiling mount coaster. Okay, that's a that's a pretty. It would be amazing. That's a pretty great answer off the fly oh yeah now i oh, i was so absorbed into your answer i wasn't thinking let me think um wow well this will give me time to think of my next better i, I had one this game is difficult um animal kingdom oh okay um oh, okay this doesn't count because it's big budget and there's already one but i really want there to be like a seminar for avatar like 
mating oh my God. in Avatar Land because it makes no sense to me. Because apparently you can like do how humans mate and not make love. Yeah, and without babies. the tails. You have to have the they're called Tushi love bonds or something. Right. And then and then you but then you have to be accepted by the, the by the god that's the tree. Awa. Okay, so great, you know what this is. <laughs> you would not need the seminar. You'd be sitting there. No, I'm just wondering because they're all very into the in universe canon of of Pandora. So, um, what is the canon explanation for this? Is it an in universe like couples therapy session? No, it's like like it's they like, all sit in like folding chairs and someone's put like chocolate chip cookies on a table and it's like a rehab group or something. It's like high school sex ed for the kids. Okay, so you're in a classroom. Are you being taught by Sigourney Weaver? No, it's just a it's just a random gym teacher named like Bill. <laughs> Who's just has a? But he's an avatar. Yeah, but he has a handlebar he's mustache. He's wearing like a baseball cap, and he has like a whistle around his yes, neck. Yes, exactly. And he's wearing like a, a tank blue top. baseball cap with a white polo. Yeah, and and, and a whistle. He's got for, like a beer gut, and he's wearing like khaki shorts. <laughs> but he's blue and he's super a blue tall. Avatar. He's eight feet tall. He's eight feet it's tall. actually amazing puppetry. Uh, and then he's a it's a life realistic <laughs> animatronic figure and just, of this character. And just using different brands of Swiffers, he tries to explain how to create a tissue lo- or a, whatever that is love bond. Yeah, the love bond of the avatar. That's perfect. There you go. Is it a ride? Are you in like an omni mover system? Nope, it's just a room. <laughs> Just a room that you sit in. You think it's a pre-show for like a ride, and they're just like, "Okay, thanks," and they like escort you out into a gift shop. What's in the gift shop when you exit? The gift shop is themed to be like a high school hallway, but the, all the lockers are like twenty feet tall. Okay, and then you open a locker, and every locker has a different, seemingly random merchandise item that you can buy. There's like a Kermit. <laughs> like there's... Yeah, there's a Kermit in one locker, and it's like not efficient at all. Like you forget what locker you've opened, and if you do want to buy something, you're like, where was it? And you like can't find and you, it. They force you to close the lockers, or they get mad at you. Yeah, and the people that work there know which lockers have which items, but they're so concerned about being in character. That if you're like, which locker had the the potted plant from Pandora in it? They'll be like, I don't know. I'm I'm just a teacher. I don't know what students. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Keep in their That's none of my business. But you're like in front of the cash register. Like you've waited in line to ask this, and they're just like, well, legally, I'm not allowed to go through students' lockers unless like a bomb threat is called in. <laughs> and you're like, oh, but I want to buy this item. Oh wait, wait, wait. A little add addition to the main show. Oh, of course. You, the, if, if the if the gym teacher doesn't show up for 15 minutes, you're legally allowed to leave. Exactly. You're like, well, we're we don't have to be here. It's just, okay, we're getting too far in depth, and that one doesn't even count. So here's mine the good dinosaur usa oh yes because there's dino land usa i think that's what it's called it's the good it's just the good dinosaur so literally a really quick retheming keep everything and just repaint them all to feature the good dinosaur which is pixar's most memorable movie believe it or not came out like a year or two ago maybe it was last it was yeah it was the same year as inside out you're right it was it was crowded up against it i think it was only a six month gap between the two and it was horrible I mean, it wasn't, I guess it wasn't horrible. It was it so was not bad. memorable. I didn't hate it, but it wasn't good. Yeah, and the, the animation left a lot to be desired. It was scary. It was very dark. Yeah. Because the animation, like, they looked so cute, and they were such fluorescent colors, but they bled real blood. And you're and they, like, ooh. There was so much talk about murder in that there entire movie. There was a lot movie. of murder. You saw a live creature get eaten in front of your eyes. Um, he ate fermented fruit and had a drug trip. <laughs> the last thing the dad did was try to force his son to kill a human in front of him. Wasn't that the kid? Yeah, and he was, and then the kid runs away, and then he's disappointed in Arlo, so they have to go out into the wilderness, and then he gets his dad drowned by a river. And so turn that into a theme park. It's like if the <laughs> Land Before Time was less good. Exactly. So put that in Dino Land USA. You have Arlo. And it's set in a theme park, so is he now a child that's been lost in a theme park? It's like a modern <laughs> AU of, of and just that, just whatever that, it was. Just that squeaky dinosaur. voice. Where am I? Oh, yeah. His little squeaky voice. He was really annoying. I wanted to like Arlo, but... Okay, well, that's not the most interesting one, but I, I did good on the Avatar Land, but that's mine. Dino Land... You know what, though? I'm ride or die for good dinosaur. Ride or die. I would love that. I would love good dinosaur representation. And Primeval Whirl is just... You can retheme it to the river of his father dying. Right, and you're sitting in a figure of his father like being swirled around in the rapids absolutely perfect and then there's an animatronic arlo next to like the ride overlooking you going dad dad 
bad. And he just yells that the whole time. But he gets, like, more and more distraught, so you, like, feel really bad. This might be more appropriate for a river raft type ride. Oh, the Kali River Rapids. Absolutely. The good dinosaur dad death scene River Rapids. The good dinosaur drowning of Arlo's father River <laughs> Rapids adventure. Okay, go for it. Um, So Epcot has not been done yet, so I'm, I'm about to squander Epcot. I'm in full support of this retheming of the World Showcase to um, theme it to Disney rides, all the different countries. I think that's a great idea. So what I would like to do is I heard they're putting in a Ratatouille ride in France Pavilion. Ratatouille is my favorite Pixar movie. And people think that's a joke when you say it. Go watch it. It's the best. It's like art cinematically it's amazing it's an original story it doesn't follow all the tired conventions of a lot of children's movies like you're like oh it's about a rat the whole movie's gonna be him getting chased by cats and that's not it at all it's a great story about friendship and identity i love ratatouille okay sorry go on okay well i'm gonna strike that ride what (laughs) i'm gonna use the space for something else instead okay what is it yeah um well based on the conventions of this game it's going to be A new dark ride, so that's going to be really fun, and it's going to be based around the story of Hunchback of Notre Dame 2. Because the reason that Hunchback hasn't gotten any theme park representation is it's a bit of a downer. It's dark, it's scary for children, and Quasimodo doesn't get a girlfriend at the end. But Quasi deserves theme park representation. That movie has such good music. So the ride is actually kind of an amalgamation of the two because you can go through some of the fun musical sequences of the original movie, like the Bells of Notre Dame and Hellfire. You can go through those. And then you get the happy ending where Quasimodo hooks up with, I think it's Jennifer Love Hewitt or something like that, Um, his hot blonde girlfriend who sees him for who he is. It's uplifting. It's totally apt for children. They're not going to be frightened by it because Quasimodo gets a beautiful girlfriend at the end. That does sound bad. And that's going in France, you said? Yeah, that's we're getting rid of the Ratatouille ride. We're putting in a a large Quasimodo dark ride. Um I I don't know. I don't have much else on that other than I I, we get a long discussion about the studio that made Hunchback of Notre Dame two. Disney Tune. And they made all of the direct DVD ones, and I think the Tinkerbell movies, too, which I don't dislike. I think the Tinkerbell movies are pretty good. Okay. So, mine is Universal Studios Florida. Okay. Alien. So, Men in Black Alien Attack is a good ride. It's a great ride. I love it. Oh, no. What are you doing to Men in Black? So, have you ever heard of the movie Aliens in the Attic? Yes. Starring, didn't have the girl from High School Musical? Wasn't Sharpay in that? I don't know. I've never seen it. Me neither, but I remember the poster, and I think Sharpay was on it. I remember it because it sounded bad. Yeah, it it apparently was bad. A movie I did see, which was Monsters vs. Aliens. Oh. Okay, so hear me out. This is a this is a twofer. It's Monsters vs. Aliens in the Attic, Alien Attack. Wow. Yes, and so it's the same ride, except you repaint the. The, you just repaint. It's You don't change one thing. You just repaint the aliens to be the same color as the style of the aliens in, you know, uh, Monsters vs. Aliens and uh, Aliens in the Attic. And then that's it. And then you just change the title. And at the end, still Will Smith. It's Will Smith still says, congratulations, you did a great job. Oh, nice. He's still there. He's hanging out. Yes. He's still there. What do you have to say to that? I, I think I can top this. What, already? Yeah, I can top <laughs> I'm this. I'm not ready. I, I don't know my next one. Hold on. I think we've <laughs> run out of parks after the next one. No, How now we, we got to go to the wonderful world of Cedar Fair and Six like Flags. Like Knott's Berry Farm and stuff? Okay, well, I'm doing Magic Kingdom next because I think we haven't done that. Have we done Magic Kingdom? You saw Magic Kingdom and Hollywood oh, right, Studios. Hollywood Studios. Okay, well, I'm taking Magic Kingdom. Okay. All right, so we have Tom Sawyer Island, which is just kind of sitting out mm-hmm. there. And um, I don't think they've added anything new to it in a while. And it just doesn't have a lot going on there and i'm also and you're gonna know where i'm going with this when i say this i also keep thinking about how they've had many efforts to make muppets um good theme park attractions they've had the the new america show that's in the um america area there i know exactly where you're going with this you know where i'm going with this yeah go for it and disneyland rethemed our own tom sawyer island to the pirate's lair on tom sawyer island because kids love pirates so my proposal is to make Florida's Tom Sawyer Island into Muppet Treasure Island. Thank you so much. 
This the is the best great. Muppet movie of all time. So how, yeah, uh, what? Okay. Anyways, so <laughs> how are, how do we go about this? The best adaptation of Treasure Island. Well, I think it should still be like a play area and interactive, but I think that you could easily clear space for like an auditorium section, like an open or uh, open air theater. So you can have like fun musical performances of the songs from Muppet Treasure Island with all your favorite Muppet performers. And you can have meet and greets with Kermit dressed as a pirate. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. Are we talking full body walk around Kermit? We sure are. They still have that somewhere. It's probably in France. Oh, no. It's coming back. That that one, the creepy one? Okay, go on. Sorry. It's not that creepy. He's just a little chunkier. <laughs> He's a thick Kermit. Uh, <laughs> Kermit is thick Kermit with three is Cs. Thick. I would love to put a ride on the island. But I just don't think there's space unless you want to pull like a Star Wars land where you push out the boundaries of the island. But um, you could have the. Do you guys have the sailing ship Columbia going around the river? Is that not a thing? Um, well, we have the a riverboat. You don't have a pirate ship? No. Because California, we have Mark Twain and we have the sailing ship Columbia, and they take turns, so you can go on a pirate ship too. So I was I was gonna say that you know you could retheme your pirate ship too, but no, nah, never mind. We'll keep it on the island. Um, so that's my, my concept is retheming. And in the pirate caves, you could have like little Toontown-esque effects where things pop up in windows and the rock formations and there are little puppets moving around and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, just a, a simple retheming to liven up the interest in Tom Sawyer hmm. Island. Okay. Now I'm guessing I have to go with Hollywood Studios, which should be easy. I like, if you think about it, but it's hard for me to pick. What is the best unknown Disney property? But no, not unknown, but what is the best, the least lucrative Disney property nowadays? I have a good one. Um, we're going to have to take away a fan favorite, the Hollywood Tower of Terror. What? I know. We only have one left. I know. Well, and there's others around the world, but this is the last one. I think a national treasure drop tower in which each place that you drop to is a different room would be very interesting. Ooh. Like it like you know how they I think there's an elevator in one of the movies they like fall or something. They have the ele- the, the really makeshift elevators in the yeah, and you know, you know what I'm talking sure. about. Everybody's, you know, the the elevators in National Treasure. I'm all about elevators and escalators in movies. I'm I con- don't remember any elevator scenes, but I believe you. I mean, in the first one I think they like have an elevator and he's like they left him to, the the bad guy leaves him down there and he goes up on the elevator. Oh, like to get down to the mines right, or sure. something like that. And so it's like a mine kind of like you know vague gold city kind of idea and the last one it drops Mm -hmm. you down to the gold city and then the entire time Nicolas Cage is just there saying like he could even do the rocket raccoon line where he's like at the very you know when you reach the top on one of the programs of Guardians of the Galaxy drop that drop tower mission breakout yeah it says like uh it's like Disneyland. This is inconsistent. You know that Rocket Raccoon. Like yeah. that's thematically inconsistent. Like you just that's have, thematically inconsistent. Yeah. yeah, you have Nicolas Cage being like Disneyland. That's thematically inconsistent, and then just the entire. <laughs> so it's just a reskin of Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. So it's not even a retheming of of Tower of Terror. It's a Tower of Terror reskinned into a reskin of Guardians of the Galaxy. That's National Treasure themed. Absolutely. First, you build the Guardians of the Galaxy one, and then on top of it, you build the National Treasure one. Okay. You never open the Guardians of the Galaxy one, but all the Rocket Raccoons and Rides are just replaced with Nicolas Cage being like, we've got to get out of here. Um, yeah, so that's it. That's my National Treasure um, drop tower. Okay. So you already have one for knots? That's not fair. I think I've got it on lock. Well, I don't even know if it has to be knots. I guess I would put it actually in like, you know what? I'll, I'm going to pick... Uh, Six Flags Discovery Kingdom, formerly Marine World. That was one of my most visited theme parks as a child. And for a time, they had a land themed to the Looney Tunes. And I think that the Looney Tunes, they just allowed the license to expire. But I know that many, many theme parks over the years had Looney Tunes themed lands. And that that's something that's attainable if you're willing to pay for it. So my concept is a land themed around Space Jam. The time for nostalgia is now. People love Space Jam. The Looney Tunes come cheap, and Michael Jordan probably does too. You think Space Jam is a is a movie that isn't well known enough? What you think Space Jam is too known? Well, I think Space Jam still has <laughs> the rights to Looney Tunes. I believe so. 
Six Flags does? Yes, because Six, well, now it's Premier Parks. But if you remember the Astro World video, when Premier Parks took over, one of the main deals of the contract was they got to keep the care of the. I guess I didn't mention that in the video. This is just something I knew. Wow. I you just, just know it. that. Like, isn't, that, isn't that funny how I just know things? Wait, so, does, so Six Flags does still have Looney Tunes, so they could use Space Jam. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Is what you. What I'm what I'm saying is you did a good job and got it right. Well, that's good. I I won. You did win. I concede because any <laughs> other park would never have enough money or have the ability to license a property. I mean, unless it's just like, but 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 then kids love Looney Tunes and basketball, and adults love nostalgia this is and they love Space Jam. Let me think. We stuck to United States parks. Let me just before I before I give up. <laughs> oh wait. Mm-mm. Well, you get. I mean, you basically have. Knott's Berry Farm open wide. But not but Knott's is owned by Cedar Fair and what movie or intellectual property are they gonna buy? Peanuts. Oh. <laughs> I mean basically something cheap that they can afford, because they, they bought peanuts. They sprung for peanuts. Popeye is an easy one to get. I sprung for peanuts. Isn't that a it feels like a <laughs> twisted like saying. That's what you say when you're sitting down at the movie theater. Like good news. <laughs> I, sp- I, sprung I sprung for, for peanuts. peanuts. I was thinking, like, I'm working around here for peanuts. Oh, maybe like I'm working for peanuts. I think I'm. Sp- I sprung for peanuts is optimistic though. Like you splurged, you treated yourself. Wow. Well, you're the raisin bran person. Mm-hmm. Um, I-, I think it would be interesting to have like a situation where you worked in Snoopy Land, and so you could literally say. I'm working for peanuts. Oh, that would be... I bet no one's ever made that joke. I bet no teenager that works in Snoopy land has ever made a joke about how they're working for peanuts. I just feel like the overlap of senses of humor is probably not there. If you found that funny, then you probably are doing something other than working in Snoopy land. Is what you, <laughs> <laughs> that Venn diagram is on two separate circles. Yeah. Okay, well... You won because oh, I won. I mean, other Yay. than peanuts, and you gave me that, so that was my last go for. But uh, but I would think I was gonna approach it from just like what's cheap. Well, I mean, yeah, but, I but, almost, but at that point um, you're just throwing out. I almost stuff. was gonna say goosebumps for knots. Okay. Because I feel like goosebumps is cheap, and they like their scare mazes. And but I the reason I didn't ultimately pick that one is I know that Sally Corp made a figure of the Slappy Dummy to try to sell a Goosebumps ride to somebody. So I thought it was cheating to use one that might actually, like, come to fruition at some point. That is cheating. No, I can't use that one. There you go. No, I've I've already... (laughs) You could have done this, but now you can't. Well, I'm... Why don't you pick, like, an old, sad video game character? Look, I know, but but at that point, it's just throwing out stuff. (gasps) Banjo-Kazooie. Okay, well, you're obviously still into this, so I'm going to keep... I'm going to make up one real quick. (laughs) What... No, I, I honestly am out of ideas. My my first hand theme park experience has been exhausted once we passed. I could Knott's give you Berry a world farm. of fun one. Oh, no one's done SeaWorld. I know, I thought about that. Ooh. Blackfish SeaWorld experience. They no. literally show Blackfish no. and then they, they, they have someone it's like Mystery Science Theater, but they just pause it and they're just like, Okay, so what you saw there is a little exaggerated. <laughs> it's a They can do free bl- willy. People love that. Okay, so now we're just doing whale movies. <laughs> Didn't they actually free Willy and then he died? Yes, there was at, at, in the wake of the movies and their success, people like petitioned and protested to get Willy freed because he was a performing whale, and um, everybody watched him slowly starve to death. And I think he ended up dying of pneumonia. As all great heroes do. He just kept losing weight and everyone was like, we need to feed him. And it's like, you can't feed that whale. That's a wild whale now. <laughs> Though I love the idea of uh, every, these animal rights activists standing on the dock. You can't feed that whale. <laughs> I'm, of course, pro-animal rights, but just the idea of a movie producer being like, nope, you freed him. You can't do anything. Don't you You're dare. Right. Maybe it was out of spite. Maybe yeah. they're like, I thought you wanted the whale to be free. <laughs> Do you want us to feed the whale or not? I thought you were like, stop feeding and housing the whale. What happened to that? Yeah, like, no, no, please feed the whale. The wh- I don't even, this thing is, I don't understand how whales get pneumonia. Easy. Because they live it's in the cold ocean easy. for their whole lives. I just can't picture like a whale with like a scarf on and like a hot compress on its head. Just, like a, a little can of soup. A like a thermometer of, it, it, it in its mouth thin. and like a shawl. Like pours it into its Yeah, like hole. a can of soup, alphabet soup. What about a uh, SeaWorld other than, you know, black showing just showing the movie Blackfish? I'm trying to think of ocean movies that aren't like owned Ocean's by 8? Disney. Mm. Ocean Oh. What is there a larger company that owns SeaWorld? Like Oh my gosh, what is it? Did you really just ask me that and I and I come you the moment you asked me that, I immediately blanked. I know it's something. <laughs> 
No, no, it's Bush Gardens. Bush Gardens owns SeaWorld, I think. Okay. Are they the ones that do Justice League rides? No, that's Six Flags. No, Six Flags, because they have Magic Mountain and they have the Justice League thing. Who's got the Nicktoons right now? Is that Universal? Oh, so Nicktoons? Um, I don't know. Well, because Great America in like the Bay Area used to have a SpongeBob themed land, and I went back and it was Snoopy, which is so funny because Knotts is also Snoopy. So you can tell Snoopy is just the bottom of the barrel character you get when you're like, who's cheap? Oh, Snoopy. That's so sad, though, because Snoopy didn't do anything wrong. I know, poor Snoopy, but he just doesn't really energize the youth these days. And it was so weird seeing what I remembered being Spongebob Land as Snoopy Land, because you go in the restaurant that used to be the Krusty Krab, and it's still shaped like the building, but it's been repainted to, like, neutral colors. And they had TVs inside that used to play Spongebob, and now they're playing Snoopy. And they had one that was like a spinner ride, and it was like SpongeBob on his boat, and it was like boating school, the spinner ride. And they had like a big boat figure in the middle with a rotating SpongeBob figure on it. So that ride is just identical now, and it's still boats, but they just put <laughs> Snoopy in the middle. Like, hey, Snoopy's boat ride. Come ride boats with Snoopy, you know, like Snoopy does. So do you think if, if Snoopy was a actor, what kind of do you think do you think he's just like a Mr. Rogers esque like sure, if if it if it helps, I'll do it. Yeah, I think or is, so. Or is or is or is he like a is he like a chain smoker that's just after it like he's like, Oh fine. No, that's Bugs Bunny. I hate Bugs Bunny. I love Snoopy though. I think he is he is like a Mr. Okay. Rogers. Because, I mean, you know what? SeaWorld owns Sesame Street right now. Do they? They have Sesame lane i believe wow so so i can use sesame street properties do you think do you think they own between the lions probably a between the lions do you know what i'm talking about when I've, i say between the I've lions i only p- can picture promo images of between the lions i've never don't lie. seen it don't lie jenny you watch between the lions all i've the time. never watched an episode of between the lions you're a liar um it's a horrifying puppet show i i was no. rec- when i was researching for bear in the big blue house i stumbled upon it it is very interesting. It was is on- it dark? Is it like an adult, like mean spirited one? No, it's very kind, and it's actually meant to teach reading. So it, it's oh. it's it's very nice. But then there's like weird, they have like weird dark segments. Like there's this one monkey new like film noir detective that like it's all dark <laughs> and it's raining, and it's just this monkey puppet talking about like solving the case. And then there's like this this one puppet that's like contr- like. There's a, there, like one hand is on his waist, so it like moves in big. You know that scene, like that old SpongeBob cartoon, where he's like going around town. Mm-hmm. It's like that, but with a puppet. Oh yeah, bring it around. I wish town. I, I wish this uh, this podcast program were on. I could just send you things because then I would just send you these horrifying <laughs> pictures. Well, I was like looking around my room for inspiration and realized that no one's bought My Little Pony rights for a theme park ride. Well, what, what is it gonna be? Doesn't matter. I'll ride it. Doesn't matter. I mean. Do you watch My Little Pony? Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, no. I'm not. I'm not so current on it anymore. But I've seen a lot of it. Is it of all of its incarnations? My Little Pony Tales being the best one. Is it quality? The new one is is the most quality. Um, and when it, I say quality, I mean a fun watch. Yeah, sure. And I, maybe even still, they're a fun watch. It's definitely decreased in quality the longer it's run. And I think that's just because it's gone for like eight seasons now or something insane because bronies have kept it on life support longer than it maybe needed to be. Hmm. But why? No, I'm not going to ask again. <laughs> not going to ask why again. So My Little Ponies could easily go anywhere, although I'm not. Their, their world is so cool and you could have those big walk around suits that they do the mall tours with. I would love that. What else is there? That's re- what, what would be the cheapest thing you could buy you know what maybe we should have been thinking of more toy brands there are a lot of toy brands that don't that aren't tied to a movie studio but that just like monster high that's right another monster high reference from jenny let's build a monster high in legoland okay what about this though you ready for this one okay blumhouse studios (gasps) that it costs approximately 12 dollars the last time i checked and there are so like a truth or dare haunted house, you know. So, you know. Something's... I thought they were in bed with Universal. Are they? Because they like every year. They, I don't know if they're owned by it or if Universal like licenses them every year. But it seems like every Halloween horror nights they have like a best of Blumhouse maze. Like it seems like they're very much like best friends with Blumhouse. But I don't know if that's conditional to the contract being renewed every year or if they really own it. 
But what would you do if you could? What, what park? Pre- I don't SeaWorld? know. Any park. Any of the Halloween parks? SeaWorld presents Blumhouse. Oh, no. Okay. Let's do one more. You have more? No. I'm out. You keep saying... I'm cleaned out. You know, you keep saying you're out, and then you're like, hold on. <laughs> yeah. I just remembered this one thing, because literally yeah. this, this game has no stipulations other than you can't use the same no. park twice. <gasps> oh, <laughs> I just had a great idea. Okay. Okay. I, what parks are left? Throw me a park. Any World's park. Worlds of fun. Did we do SeaWorld? What was your last pick? I had conceded so long ago. You've won. We're just, this is like the epilogue. Like, is, you know how on Deal or No <laughs> okay. Deal they still open the briefcases? Like, even after you, you're out, this is it. All right. Fair. Okay. Okay. Let's put it in Worlds of Fun um, because this is, in fact, a world of fun. And I'm, it could go either way. My favorite computer games when I was a kid were Putt Putt and Freddy Fish. I, why? And there's no way those are expensive in the year 2018. I've heard I of Putt I think you can get them as app games now. Is it a, uh... Putt Putt and Freddy Fish were made by the same company. Um, and I don't know what the name of the company is. Were these popular, but... like, are these like CD games? I'm, I'm imagining, yeah. like, seeing this. They were like hunt and click, and you had to, you know, find enough sea urchins to buy me a a pipe to free Mr. Turtle and stuff like that. It was like a task-oriented adventure game. Mm. And at the helm of Putt-Putt was this little purple car with a face. Oh, and we all know from I, Cars. I, 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 Cars Land is making bank for Disney. I've at least seen this. Okay, go on. I think I literally have a Putt-Putt. Oh, yes, I've seen this. In my room right now. I think it, when I last time I talked about Cars, I think I threw Putt-Putt in the background. I love Putt Putt. He's amazing. Putt Putt saves the zoo. Oh, that was the best one. Putt Putt saves, and it had the theme song. Putt Putt saves the zoo. I don't think I've. Putt Putt saves the zoo. Did you play it? N- no, I think this would have zoo, been. Zoo zoo. <laughs> when did it come out? I don't think I would have been playing this. Oh, I I was like a baby when it came out. Okay, I don't know. I don't think that. In fact, my dad used to work in the video game industry, and the first time I played it, it was a demo disc that he had gotten at like a programmers conference or something. So, like, you could only save one of the baby animals, and then you could, like, go to the places where you could almost save the other baby animals, and then Putt-Putt would literally say, I can't go there because this is a demo version, which is amazing. <laughs> I, uh, no, I have not, no, I've, I've seen it. That's about it. I don't think I've ever actually clicked around on, is it? All you have to know is that it's a really friendly talking car. Okay. And that he lives in a, a wonderful, friendly world. And I'm that, on board. Yeah. Putt Putt saves the zoo. Let's put it at a zoo. Zoos are theme parks. Let's do it. Okay. In fact, what was my what was my marine world idea? It was um Space Jam. Let's get rid of that. Because I think that's a great place for Putt Putt because they used to have jungle animals too. Could use Bush Gardens, which does have jungle animals. Oh, okay, yeah, let's do that. Let's do Bush Gardens. Putt Putt Bush Gardens. Get some of those Disney Pixar cars dollars. Putt Putt Bush Gardens. Putt Putt Bush Garden. And so what? what is it? It's like, a, it could be like a rambling Autopia pace ride, but not with like actual gasoline using cars, just like little electric cars that you drive on the track and you just go through all the different lands of the zoo. Wait, so is Putt Putt a world where multiple talking cars live? Yeah, it's full of living cars. Mm, okay, so in this sense, it would be, it would just, so it's just Autopia? You just get in Putt Putt? That seems kind of... You get him putt putt, and then his his little lovable dog Pep is in the um, glove compartment. Wait, so a car owns you. a dog? The car owns the dog Pep, and it stays in the glove compartment. He usually sits shotgun, but you can't do that if it's a ride vehicle. So he can hang out of the glove compartment. It can be like the ET ride where you like can't reach him, but you see him there, and he like moves around a little. Okay. And then you just go through the zoo and and you help people along the way. I get it. You get it. Well, do you have any other? ideas no nope. <laughs> that's that you know we we'll, we'll do this again sometime and we'll recharge <laughs> and then we'll be we'll become we'll also we'll have a, the access to the parks where it makes sense so we're not resorting to peanuts between the lions putt putt and all the yeah but uh this 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 game worked out a lot better than i thought it would oh so. yeah i thought i would only have one idea no, we, no, you out. you were getting to the point where you were just proving to me that you had other ideas. <laughs> just you know, everything became an idea. <laughs> Every thought I have is an idea in the world that doesn't exist. 
in this world where I can just make whatever I want. Yes. Perfect. Yep. Um, well, Jenny, thank you so much for joining me today. And we'll put links, send me links to your everything, and it'll be in the description. Nice. Well, thank you for having me. Anytime. Literally anytime. Even if I have another guest, I'll just DM you and be like, you ready? Just shove me in as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, um, to everyone listening, thank you for listening to this craziness and this um, r- this ramble fest, which is all my fault. But um, thank you so much for listening. Uh, don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. And thank you for visiting Defunct Land. Yeah.